right, it looks like after many years of my condenser being down here, it gave way. So the only thing I'm seeing right now is just the copper lines. All right, it lasts me about six years and I'm gonna try to figure out what happened here so this doesn't happen again. This is the tools I'm gonna need to install the new air conditioner. I'm gonna need some nitrogen, some soap to check for leaks, soldering, also my digital gauges, a vacuum, a cylinder or refrigerant 410A that is required for that unit that I have in the van, and also my tools and some other things I might need along the way. But let me show you here what happened. This is the same unit I had in my 2004 Sprinter. So right now we're close to 2020. So we're looking at six years been under here. And if you look at right here, this screw right here with the plastic, which it goes right here, it gave way here and also back here. So this bracket, this is probably a good six to eight pounds. So this has been hanging here. Every time you hit a bump, this plastic suffers a little bit. So it is my fault for not securing it more properly than it is right now. So I'm gonna do something a little bit better this time. Uh, as you can see, this is where the uh, condenser was dragging on the highway. So what I did, I purchased a unit. It's not the same brand, but it's exactly the same box. So I'm not gonna have a problem installing this back here again. And I'm gonna modify it a little bit so it works a little bit better with a new unit. Instead of having this small ice machine fan, I'm gonna try to use the one that comes from factory. Um, see if I'm able to install it here with no problem. So that way I get better ventilation instead of this small ice machine fan, which has been working great. All right, so this is the new unit. And always use cutlass gloves or any other gloves when you're dealing with very sharp metals. So this is the condenser that I had in my van that looks exactly like this one. And these are the plastics that gave way. This is about seven, eight pounds. So this little plastic couldn't hold it no more. And that's why it fell off. So hopefully this time I'll be able to do a little bit better. So this is very dangerous. So you have to take the pressure out. All right, this is only for trained technicians. They're certified to deal with refrigerants to do this. I need to puncture the line and with that recovery machine I need to recover all the refrigerant to evacuate all the refrigerant from here to that cylinder there because it is illegal to release this refrigerant in the air it's really bad for the ozone now that I have the recovery machine installed and the gauge is installed what it requires is a this special tool right here is called a pinch off valve. So you can pinch off and retrieve the refrigerant through here without having any leak. And this is where you installed the connection right here. The very special tool. So I wanna pinch it off around here. See the tube goes around that slot right there. Make sure you adjust it here properly. And now we're just gonna pinch it. Now I can work safely removing the uh, condenser. All right. All right, this is where the blower is. All right, with this tool, 
I'm gonna crimp the tube. That way the uh, compressor can be used one day again. See what that does to the uh, tube. It closes it up and it seals the compressor. Now I can go ahead and just cut the line. And also here we can close this here. And cut it. There it is. So now the compressor is already isolated from the condenser. Now you just need to cut the cable that leads to the blower here, which is right through here. Now this fan has a capacitor, which is right here, which I'm gonna need to run the fan. So I'm gonna need to save that capacitor there. All right, so I'm not gonna have any need for this electronic right here. You can just start cutting these cables here out of the way. Here's the capacitor right in here. So these wires here leading to the compressor, I'm not gonna need. So we're gonna take those out. All right, so this yellow one right here. All right, we're gonna take the capacitor out of here. You gotta be careful with the capacitor already has power in it. You, you don't wanna get shocked with it. All right, this is your power cord which you're not gonna need. This is your compressor, which you're also not gonna need. Okay, we're also not gonna need these two right here. And this ground, all right. So this is already isolated from the air conditioner already. This is your transformer right here, which you're not gonna need. All right, there's a couple of screws. There's two more screws here, one here, and one on the other side. Now this is the part we're going to be using. We're going to be using the fan, but we don't need this fan right here. So what I want to do is I want to disattach it from the shaft. Should come off. Should come off right off. There it is. Remove that uh, washer. I already checked in the van and I'm not gonna need to cut this shaft here. There's plenty of room for the shaft to be circulating. I don't wanna cut the shaft if I don't need to. The less you cut uh, on especially electronic like motors, it's already designed to have the shaft back here. So I don't wanna disbalance the motor by taking the shaft off. Okay, so the capacitor is needed to be running the fan. So right now this is fan. Herm means compressor. We're not gonna need that, but I'm going to leave this protector here, that way it doesn't touch anything. That protector is going to help, no sparks. And this is your common, this is where your power is going to go to. The common here, and you put the negative on the negative here. See how the fan works? Alright, so it works perfect. There's plenty of wind coming through here. Perfect. So like I said, you really need the capacitor um, to run the fan because this fan does use a capacitor and it's got to be probably five microfarads. 
so definitely you're going to need a capacitor to run the fan and like I said the shaft uh, it doesn't bother me under the van because there's a big opening and this is your ground which we need to install this was going to the controller this yellow one right here was going to the controller module but we don't need it so we're going to cap this wire here we're not going to need this wire right here all right but the green which is your ground this one you really need to attach it to a ground to get ground on the fan because right now the fan has no ground so we definitely we need to use this for ground now what i usually do is i take the fan housing out see as you see right there and i'll put this aside and after i install the fan and bolt it securely to the chassis of the van i can install my condenser so this is very important to do first then i'll be doing some soldering all right this is the old one and it has an ice machine fan which is not that efficient because you have a lot of dead space here but it had a lot of high rpm so it was working just fine and now this is the new one as you can see the housing is exactly the same that's why i went to amazon and i could not find my ge air conditioning but i found this other brand which is it looks like ge sold their brand to this company here right here this one it's called cult front and this is the numbers i need to charge the system with i was fortunate enough to find the same air conditioning that way i don't have to make any adjustments on the copper pipes or the holes in the chassis it's very easy to install this time instead of figuring out how to attach it i know already where it's going to be at in order for me to attach this under the van i need to take the fan out but later what i need to do is use some loctite thread sealant on this bolt that way the fan does not come off very important even though it has a tension washer based on the other one i had a screw right here this is what one of these screws is going to go to the chassis a very long one it's going to go here and two of these ones will go like the other one right here it will go right over here and the other one it's going to be up here based on the other one where it's positioning at it's going to be right here so i'm going to open these two holes here so the way it fits in the same position the other one was all right those two holes are already open and this one's already circulated where it's going to go at all right if you look at the other system you see this hole right here in order to get good ventilation to go out the uh, condenser it's needed to close this here so what i did on the other one was that i used some uh, rivets and i placed this aluminum piece here but in this time i'm not going to use aluminum i'm going to use a piece of this material right here and i'm also going to use rivets i'd rather use plastic in this occasion because there's no need to have any strength here so i'm just going to get plastic always use safety glasses I don't need that part right there. So I'm gonna put four rivets. All right, there it is. I placed the rivets, that's not going anywhere. So that way now, when I place the uh, condenser in here, there's no air escape to there, all secure. Now the condenser is ready to be installed. All right, this is gonna be exactly how the other one was, right there. 
before I install it, I want to use some Loctite. And like I said here, the shaft is right up here. There's plenty of room for the shaft to move. Now I'm going to install the fan. There's a little washer that goes here in the back. Right there it is. But I'm also going to use some threat seal on this side here. You can just hold the fan. Circle it a little bit. You can feel that it's getting very tight already. All right. All right, that's not going anywhere. Now before I install the condenser, I need to remove this two solderings right there. All right, I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. Now I have to remove this one, and I also have to remove this other one here. All right, it's time to install the condenser. Now these copper pipes here need to be connected. This one will go right up here. I've got to bend it to put it right through here to this other pipe right here. careful when you bend copper pipes that way you don't bend them too much this one's gonna go right here all right so I just gotta solder it so I can push it in this other one right here will go in to this one here but first I want to install this one first then I'll worry about this one here all right it's very important to put some rags in here especially wet rags so that way you don't burn that plastic I'm gonna put double the rag it's a bit wetted already put it everywhere and since it's gonna be a lot of heat I got a wet napkin and I'm gonna wrap it around the tube because we don't want that heat to travel all the way to the uh, 
condenser. There it is. It's perfect there. Now we can start soldering it. Okay, so that one is connected already. For now, what I'm gonna do is secure the uh, condenser just with this zip tie on this side. This is gonna be only temporarily until I do the uh, soldering. Now, since I'm gonna solder this side here, we wanna use the same method of protecting the plastics with this towel right here and right now I decided to rain so it's not a good way to start working here with it's raining all right so this pipe will go right through here I just got to bend it right amount that I need okay so now I'm gonna give it a little bit of fire there's a little bit of oil coming out of there it's gonna be fine it's gonna probably spark up a little bit. looks like a perfect solder all right nothing got burned now I have to check with the mirror see if it's any problems on the soldering okay, this is one solder here and this is another solder right here perfect two solders all right, looks great. All right, it's getting late now. So tomorrow I'm gonna to continue to do it with the electrical. Also fasten the condenser right here, so that way it's safe. And since my previous condenser failed, we want to avoid from this one 
happening the same thing. I'm going to fasten it real good tomorrow. And I'm going to charge the system and I'm going to show you how it works. All right.